Morning, glory, America. Bonjour, hi, Kennedy. Hugh Hewitt inside the Beltway. That music is my anniversary music. Fetching Mrs. Hewitt and I are married 39 years tomorrow, Saturday. I can't salute her on a Saturday. I'm not live. So I just do it on the day before. Happy anniversary. Thank you, sweetie, for putting up with this guy for 39 years. I also have an anniversary of the show, and it was really appropriately begun today. You know, I sent 39 red roses to the fetching Mrs. Hewitt for the anniversary. She likes them. I got the picture and everything. But what do I do for Dwayne on the anniversary? What do I do for Adam on the anniversary of the show, which is now 21 years old? The radio show that you're listening to 21 years ago was launched July 10, tomorrow, in 2000. What do we do? And by the way, I think it's fortuitous completely that those two anniversaries are together, so I can't forget one or the other. Uh, I, I have the studio blow up, and it's completely and wholly appropriate that we have a Keystone Cops fire drill right before the show goes on. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, it looks perfectly normal. But I assure you, it's only by the superhuman intervention of me uh, working with gruff grunts and expletives yelled at me through FaceTime that I have assembled what is... Uh, a very incomplete, but nevertheless operable workaround. It is what, like when Apollo 13 was circling the moon. I recorded Kevin your end, sailor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good way to, you see, there's this thing called a fuse. And we had Rita, Elsa, what, Elsa, Elsa came through. Can you play Frozen for me, by the way? Elsa sings Frozen, doesn't she? At some point, um, I don't know what Elsa sings in Frozen, but there's something called a super duper processor. Yeah, that's what happened. It can't hold anything back. And when Elsa came through yesterday, <laughs> lights went in and off two or three times. So I go to the studio and check it out late last night. I'd been out to dinner with Danny Silva and Jamie Gangel, got a chance to say hello to Vice President Mrs. Cheney and greet them. Had a great, great dinner. And, and right before I left, I thought, okay, maybe it'll be back up. Maybe it'll be working. I come back, nothing deader than, I, you know, dead cat drop from the roof. And no, no dead cat bounce, just dead. And so um, ever gracious Dwayne and ever calm Hugh went to work this morning an hour ago trying to change a fuse because ever gracious Jeff Matska had given me two. I dropped one and couldn't find it. And so that meant back up to the Comrex, which you cannot see. It's actually, I could lift it up to you with, I hopefully not. This is called a mini Comrex, which is not in the shot normally. And it sounds the same to you, but it's a highly complicated piece of machinery that requires 25 minutes to set up. So we barely got on the air. Nevertheless, I still have my show prep. So let me give you the rundown. Happy anniversary, love. Happy anniversary, Dwayne and Adam. Harley and Ben, you have no idea what you walked into here. Danielle has been here about half of the show run. And, and Adam's a newcomer. Adam's the new kid. He's only been here 20 years and 51 weeks. Am I right about that, Adam? Yeah, 20. So, you know, Adam never gets to talk. Because if, if you've only... 20 years and 51 weeks, whereas Dwayne... Well, has... because he's a smart one. <laughs> Anthony tricked him. Uh, poor Anthony tricked Adam into coming in here. Adam, nothing going on here. You might like these people. No, I never even told him he'd be working in the middle of the night. No, here's the deal. The number one story around the world. Everything else doesn't matter. The Africa is suffering its worst pandemic week ever. Taiwan and South Korea, which had previously defeated the epidemic, the pandemic, are both locking down and masking up because Delta Dash 2, the new Super Delta, is spreading everywhere. And I'm begging you, please get vaccinated or this country, Mississippi, has had a surge of cases uh, that will probably bring back masking, probably shut down the local economy, not by order, but because people don't want this. 
To my friend in the hospital, I hope you're listening. I hope you're out by this time next week. 52, 53-year-old marathoner in great shape, terrific shape, lean body mass, no obesity, no underlying commitment, chest, COVID pneumonia, COVID-induced pneumonia is a hard thing. I think he's going to be fine, so I have heard. But in Taiwan, it is just a nightmare. In Africa, it's a nightmare. In India, it's a nightmare. And we have no idea in South America. And so I'm begging you, please don't roll the dice. It works. It's safe. The number of side effects are so minuscule as they, they are not statistically significant number of side effects with anything. Now, the big story there is Pfizer says, we think a, th a booster shot would be useful. They've applied for um, FDA approval of a booster shot. I hope President Biden and Ron Klain accelerate that. I would be the first in line for a booster shot. I want lots of these antibodies. And please go out and get it. Now, the second big story is American fracking, according to the Wall Street Journal. They're not going back out and turning on the wells. They're banking some cash. So they, American frackers are making dollar right now. They're, they're banking it because world crude oil is at $73.73 uh, a barrel, up 1% yesterday. And by the way, this, this process, I'm going to talk economics here. It's brought to you by Birch Gold. Go to hughgold.com, hughgold.com, because I'm going to come back to why you ought to be buying gold or rolling over a portion of your IRA or 401k into gold right now. Birch Gold are the people that do that. You can get the free information kit at hughgold.com or by texting my name, Hugh, to 474747. Uh, here's the deal. Yesterday, the Dow went down 269 points. The S&P went down 37, and the NASDAQ down, went down 105. The only thing that went up was Amazon and gold. Now, I think Amazon is a reserve currency now, and I, I'm glad I own some. Because I, I don't, I, you know, it went down 60 bucks yesterday at the open. I told you that. Uh, and I didn't blink, didn't sell a share because I believe it's an, a reserve currency. Uh, it's, it's bigger and more broadly based than Apple. It has three legs to its stool and it's got new innovation and high growth. So I think people are looking, how do I make any money when the interest rate, the 10 year bond yesterday, I, I hardly, I'm going to ask you to come to the phone. Uh, the 10 year bond dropped down to 1.288. All right, so the, oh, Harley's not here today. Okay, Harley's probably working around the clock. I, I lend one guy to Adam and uh, to uh, Andrew and Todd.com. And uh, he works for me sometimes and he works for the sponsor other times. I think today he's working over there because I think everybody in the world is calling Andrew and Todd.com or they're calling Birch Gold because they don't know. I spent a lot of the time yesterday, when you're my, I'm 65 years old, right? We've been married 39 years. The fetching Mrs. Hewitt and I, I signed an eight-year contract last year, so I have seven years maybe left, and I may teach for 20. Uh, I'm tenured. I may be teaching for 20, but I, I think I'll go crazy in retirement, and she doesn't want me around. That's why we've been married 39 years is because I'm always out of the house on two jobs. That's why marriage works. All right, some of you work together. I don't know. You are my hero. My hero. Adam, how long have you been married? For um, five years. Five years. See, that's a nice start. We're giving it good marks. They love each other. Generalissimo, how long have you been married? Uh, two. How long since I haven't been the best man? <laughs> two plus. Two years. Yeah. Two years since I wasn't the best man. How no, long since you, Carl was the best man? Uh, s same period of time, actually. Two, two, two years. Okay, yeah. just just remember that. Uh, I, I just point not out. Not that you're bitter or anything. Bitter table no, for I'm one. No, I'm not bitter. Just, just saying, two years since I wasn't the best man. I just wanted to be sure. That to Another nice rookie marriage. I think it's working. They've been repairing their house. They survived that. They're likely to go the distance. Now, honestly, if you can go through a remodel, that actually is. Uh, illness of a child is number one, stress on a marriage, moving, moving is number two, losing a job is number three, and remodeling the house, I think, is one with a star. It's, it's, a, it's the quick one, right? That's the quick one. To those who have survived all four, my hat is off to you. I have not had to do that, but illness, moving, and a remodel we have gone through. And I say to all of you, I'm blessed, you're blessed that Dwayne and Adam are here. Welcome back, America to Hewitt on Anniversary Day. 
Married to the fetching Mrs. Hewitt, 39 years tomorrow. I'm not on the air, so I'm celebrating today with you. And 21 years tomorrow on the radio show with Generalissimo and Adam. Of those 21 years, I think Sonny Bunch, the official movie critic of the Hugh Hewitt Show, has been around for a half dozen of them. Sonny, how long have you been married? I have been married for 10 years this year. Okay, you're one quarter of the way that I've gone because you haven't had your 10th yet. Congratulations on that. If you want to take any advice from me, have at least three jobs. That will keep you away and out of the house enough that you won't drive your Mrs. Sunny Bunch crazy. Yeah, well, it's, it's harder now, you know, with the uh, with all of the working from home and stuff. You got a, you got a lot of people uh, under the same roof. It's, it's getting a little crowded. Then close the door behind you and don't go out of it. Pretend that you've left the house. It's my only piece of marriage advice other than uh, do not try and buy more than one gift a year. Listen, I got a, I got a question for you I got to ask. This is important. Black Widow is coming out. I have, I have bravely shouldered my way from the beginning of the Marvel Universe through Spider-Man, the first kid Spider-Man movie, the one where he comes back after saving Captain America and, and the whole thing. Yeah. And I'm exhausted. And I can't take on Thor Ragnarok and the Avengers 1 and 2. There are like seven of them. Do I have to watch those to understand Black Widow? So Black Widow, technically uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe timeline, takes place in between uh, the end. It, it, it starts at the end of uh, Captain America Civil War, and it's before uh, the events in Avengers Infinity Perfect. War. Perfect. Perfect. So it should be okay. You should be, if you if you haven't watched other stuff, you know, you, you should be okay uh, to, to see this. Okay, I'm ready, because I really can't watch any, I'm, I I had to go back to the Bureau season two, because I'm, I, I, I can't, t the Bureau is hyper-realism and enough superheroes flying around. What do you make of the movie? It's fine. That is that is like the best way to describe Black Widow. It's it's totally fine. It is mid tier Marvel. It is mediocre uh, action. It's a bunch of stuff we've seen before, but it is funny. Uh, it does have some good uh, family comedy. So Black Widow basically gives us uh, some of the backstory of of Natasha Romanoff, uh, the Scarlett Johansson, the uh, Russian spy, right? She, in, as the film begins, she and uh, her family are, you know, family in air quotes, are living in Ohio uh, doing a sort of American, you know, you remember the, the FX show, The Americans? Yes. Um, they're, they're basically doing that. They're living in Ohio undercover so they can steal some uh, technology from the United States, uh, a company here in the United States. Did they uh, say and, where in Ohio? I, I, I don't think they said exactly where in Ohio. It's just they, Sonny, are you Ohio. putting a pail over your head every other sentence? No. Am I, am I a little bit... Uh, you, you, I come you come and go. You come and go. I hear you, but it's like you put a pail over your head. It's exactly like you took one of those big paint buckets. And is, this, was, uh, is this better? That's better. Okay. You weren't, um, you weren't on speaker with me, were you? No, I had I had my AirPods in and uh, no, those uh, AirPods. No, 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 no. Oh, Respect no, the craft, there, Sonny. Respect but, the craft. But now I have to hold the phone to my head like an idiot. I That's, know, and you uh, might hit you know, the, the mute button and not hear me giving you wise bits. What more do you want to say about what you don't know where they are in Ohio? I mean, you're yeah, the critic. We, well, I, I, they don't they don't, you know, lay out the geo coordinates for us. You know, it's, it's just Ohio. Was any of it filmed in Ohio? Did you stay to the end and see if they had they thanked the local film board of Warren, Ohio, or something like that? I I don't think they did, but they did have a they did thank uh, Australia for giving them lots of coders and programmers in the special effects department. So, if you want huh. to know where the effects were done, Australia. Huh. Um, the the uh, so anyway, she she's in Ohio with her family. Uh, they are uh, they are they're forced to leave and flee and you know she uh, goes off to the red room which is where they train all of the uh, the the super spies for this Black Widow program. Um, flash forward to the post of Captain America Civil War uh, time period and she wants to retire from being a superhero. She's you know she's on the run because of the Sokovia Accords. Blah blah blah. Um, needless to say, she gets pulled back into the game when her 
a younger sister in this family, uh, played by Florence Pugh in this film, it comes under attack for trying to uh, free the other Black Widows from the sort of mind slavery, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. The, the point is, the point is, Hugh, uh, that the, the movie is at its best when it is working with this family dynamic, when it has the big sister, little sister uh, dynamic between Scarlett Johansson and Florence Pugh, and then the uh, father and mother dynamic between uh, David Harbour, who plays Alexei, a.k.a. the Red Guardian, basically the Russian version of Captain America, um, and Rachel Weiss, who plays the mother uh, figure for this, this whole family. Um, that, is, that is the heart of the film. That's the thing that works the best, this, this kind of idea that even if they are a, a manufactured family, they're still a family that, that works very well together and, and loves each other and cares for each other. Um, the the film is at its worst when it is doing action, and that that's kind of a problem for an action movie. It's not the worst thing in the world, um, but it is. It's just all very very derivative. It's all we've seen all of this before. We've even seen most of this in uh, Marvel movies before. I mean, the big set piece at the end of the film takes place on a essentially Russian version of the Shield heli helicarrier um and it just is it's stuff we've all seen before it like down to the actual the actual villain who you know scarlett johansson has to fight is this character called taskmaster and the this this character's powers uh are looking at everything else uh that all of the other characters in the marvel cinematic universe can do and then mimicking their fighting skills i mean it just the character itself is derivative of everything else that we've seen in the uh in the series and that is a good metaphor for this which is it it's fine it's a fine is samuel l jackson Marvel in this movie. sam jackson in no it? sam jackson no sam jackson no nick fury hmm. no nick fury in no any no uh, any other is. walk-ons any other members of the there, tony stark there's, no i it, the, the the number of Ant man cross crossover is very very few uh william hurts who plays uh, General Thunderbolt Ross uh, in in some of the other of the movies he shows up for a bit in this, but that's about it. It's it's pretty self contained. It's pretty so. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it would make sense entirely if you haven't seen uh, any other Marvel movies, but it's it's pretty close. Well, I'll, I'll still go see it. I have to switch subjects on you. I want to come back and see. Do you have another movie? Because I have a very important question for you. Uh, well, we didn't talk about the Tomorrow War, which dropped. Okay, let's, let's uh, come last back and do that because I loved it. I love the Tomorrow War. But first, in the Wall Street Journal today, there is an article on the financial hobbling of graduate students who go to Columbia, and it turns out that debt compared to income is pretty good when your master's degrees at Columbia are in like grindingly dull soft software programming. The second worst. Uh, master's degree for which you will be two hundred thousand dollars in debt and get no job drama and theater arts stagecraft your debt will be four times as great as your income and if you get a master's in film video and photographic arts your debt will be six times your income after two years this does not surprise me but we should tell everyone out there you have a good gig Sonny you're making a living but it ain't easy to make a living in this business uh, no, I mean, in it, uh, it's especially uneasy in the actual world of filmmaking. I mean, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to make money making movies, um, just as it is hard to make money writing about movies. Uh, and your best bet is not to go to school to get in to do that. It's just to, you know, kind of start doing it uh, and, and, you know, move out to Los Angeles and do it out there. I mean, I, I think you'd be, you'd be much better off just like doing whatever it is you want to do and moving to Los Angeles and trying to, you know, weasel your way into uh, a job than you would be taking on $200,000 worth of debt. 100%. Now I want to go to, uh, that's, that's Sunny Bunch talking in the industry, in the business larger orbit and saying to you, don't do it, just go do it. Don't get the degree. The degree is not worth it. You can live in New York for a lot less. I saw some kids say, well, I got to live in New York for two years. No, stupid. Um, Brandon Sanderson has a series of novels called the Stormlight uh, Archive, which is, a, you know, adult epic fantasy. In it, there is a creature called the White Spine. I believe that's the name of the monster in the Tomorrow War. Am I right? Uh, I think they're called the White Spikes. White Spikes. You know, yeah. holy, 
but it's a heck of a monster. I'm I'm all on that. Uh, yeah, I mean the, the monster design in the Tomorrow War. So the Tomorrow War stars Chris Pratt as a uh, as a guy who is forced to go into the future to fight uh, a war to save humanity from extinction. If you think about the plot mechanics, the movie isn't going to make a ton of sense to you. Again, this is a this is a movie that works best when you just kind of take it on the level of family dynamics. That is that is the good and interesting thing here. It's very much a dad movie. It's about um, it's a movie about dads kind of realizing their place in the world and the importance of, uh, you know, loving and taking care of your family as opposed to, you know, wanting more for yourself, wanting to be a, you know, big, important person, that sort of thing. Um, the action in that movie, again, is fine. It's, it's, it's pretty, pretty mediocre, uh, and it doesn't help that you're watching it at home on TV. You can't go see it. In theaters, but it was a huge hit for Amazon. Apparently, Amazon's talking about how it broke all the records. There are in talks for a sequel, and uh, you know, so in theory, it was the biggest streaming movie of the week last week. But we don't really have any good numbers on that. So, well, I could not believe uh, it wasn't released in a theater because I would have gone to see it. I mean, I actually think it not only is it a great dad movie, it's just a lot of fun, right? It's just a lot of fun. And any movie with J.K. Simmons, I will go see because he went to Ohio State University and he's one of my favorite actors and he's got a good role in this. He's got some funny lines. I think it's well written. Chris Pratt is great. The action is fine. It's a dad movie. Uh, there's a slight couple of twists at the end, which make me geopolitically accepting of it. But why th does Amazon just want Prime so much that they won't go make $100 million at box office and then put it on Prime? Yeah, I mean, I think the theory uh, with I mean, so Amazon Studios had was kind of founded as the counter to Netflix in the sense that they would put their movies in theaters. And but these were more in the style films, the sort of oscar -y style films. Uh, and with their bigger budget stuff, with this and um, uh, Coming to America 2, you know, the sequel to the Eddie Murphy, Coming to America, they, they bought these during the pandemic in the theory that, look, these movies aren't going to come out in theaters anytime soon. Uh, people are going to be stuck at home watching them. Let's buy them and use them to build up our... Uh, prime Brand. video subscription yeah. service and I, I think that i think it i, I understand the, the theory here um but yeah I, I would have much rather have seen this in a theater than on you and me TV. both because it's a good movie i think people should go and get and rent it from amazon prime you got a sunny bunch seal of approval and a hugh hewitt three thumbs up but that means i'm all thumbs thank you sunny bunch follow him on twitter sunny bunch follow me of course too relieffactor.com Welcome back to the Hugh Hewitt Show. Time to check in with Tarzana Joe, the Poet Laureate of the Hugh Hewitt Show. Hello, Joe. Hello, Hugh. You know, I listened to the uh, essay you read from the Wall Street Journal uh, regarding continuing to fight uh, the culture wars, and I started to think about how I've measured my tweets, uh, edited my poems, and even speak softly around my house, lest uh, electronic devices be listening to me. And I've decided I need to change some things. Here's something that I've thought of as I've grown a little older. It's hard to move things forward looking back over your shoulder. It's hard to be successful with the chores that you've been tasked by coming up with answers if the questions can't be asked. I'm stumped by modern mores, if I may make a confession. How can you hope for progress in a climate of suppression? As often I've dictated to my sweet amanuensis, science isn't science if it only seeks consensus. Hmm. Good ideas can't grow inside a pen in which you fence them, and bad ideas can't fell if voices cannot speak against them. There's nothing that I value like a good, well-reasoned rant. But if you don't love Byron, please don't tell me that I can't. I like to be offended by the things you say and do, as long as you don't take offense when I'm offending you. I welcome every theory and the people who've professed them. Try not to be insulted if they falter when we test them. So speak in any language, from Sicilian to Swahili. What makes this country great is that ideas are spoken freely. That I'm stunned, talk. Joe. What? I'm Why stunned. You? What's the what title? A talk to Me by Terzana Joe. I love Talk to Me. And not just because you rhyme Swahili. 
I mean, that is a first. I think well, it's a first. Well, and, and there were no, you know, none of those rhymes you really don't like, well, that I love. But uh, I, Look, I, I got to ask you, though, do you really mean that as a Queens guy? Do you really mean that about Brooklyn? <laughs> what, what about Brooklyn? Well, I, I mean, can you ever lay down arms with the Brooklynese or whatever we call them? Oh, 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 you mean that the, the there's a potential for a detente and rapprochement? But yeah, of course. But of course, I don't no, believe that not, for a moment. I don't need. I don't need to. Uh, you know, there's somebody on the radio who says clarity, not agreement, yeah. uh, and <laughs> and I kind of go with that. But you, in order to get clarity, you have to be able to talk with people. I, my the trend of not not speaking up and because you're going to offend someone or uh, or uh, it's not the time. This is not the hill to die on. There's no hill to die on. But you have to keep fighting. You know that clarity before agreement guy. He's yes. from Queens too. Yeah, I heard. Uh, you know, every day, right? I'm from Queens, and I can speak Russian. And I used to have a hula hoop on the corner and do it, count to <laughs> Russian in ten, and make money. You heard that bit, right? <laughs> I no, I didn't. I didn't do that. I, 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 oh, I, I have heard Prager make that claim a thousand. The only you know, time he, I went door to door was on Halloween. I, yeah, <laughs> you know, Dennis was pretty insufferable because he played at Madison Square Garden. But people can ask him about that. Joe, that's a marvelous poem. It will be at TarzanaJoe.com. Of course it will. And for all of your poetry needs, whether it's graduations or weddings, anniversaries or whatever, go to TarzanaJoe at Reagan.com. Send him an email. His rates are reasonable. TarzanaJoe at Reagan.com. You know, there's a patio furniture shortage. Is there a poetry shortage, Joe? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm turning it out, uh, you know, in great quantities. Uh, uh, I'm not quite to the point where I have a shingle out for uh, apprentice poets to help me, but, you know, that may come. You know, Michelangelo had a bunch of people working under him. You could get some poets working. Yeah. You could turn it out. It could just be the school of Tarzana yes. Joe. Uh, the school of Tarzana Joe, yes. That, that attributes it to Tarzana Joe. We may have to charge Carl for that. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. The, the, welcome back, America. It's Hugh Hewitt. Eventually, if you're married long enough, married couples will hear their song. This is our song, Fetching Mrs. Hewitt and I. Married 39 years tomorrow. I'm celebrating the anniversary today. And whenever this plays, I have to dance. I am not what we call nimble on the dance floor. That will surprise many of you. And so I'm reluctant to get up, but have to do it for that. Also, the 21st anniversary of the radio show. On this show, we have a tradition. It is called the Chair of the Chatty Congressman. Originally held by the Honorable David Dreyer from the year 2000 to 2012, upon his retirement, it was taken up by Congressman John Campbell, a weekly guest then from 2012 to 2015. He retired from the chair in 2015. Now Senator Tom Cotton was then a congressman. He took the chair for two years, followed by the estimable Mike Pompeo, who was on yesterday, the former Secretary of State during his years, was when he became the director of the CIA, replaced by my next guest, Mike Gallagher. Congressman Gallagher hails from Wisconsin. He is affable and smart about matters of defense. He's a member of the Nixon Seminar. There is, however, one sad thing, He's a uh, Wisconsin fan, and I, I got to ask you this question. Did you watch the match between Phil Mickelson and Tom Brady versus Bryson DeChambeau and Aaron Rodgers, Mike Gallagher? I, I did, Hugh. I love so the match. I'm all I right. have a question. Do you know what I, 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 I do not know why Rodgers and DeChambeau won, and do you know why? Oh, gosh. I don't know, Hugh. I'm sure you're going to tell me, though. I thought Rodgers would walk off the fourth tee. Well, far from doing that, he sank every putt, every clutch putt. He but needed. he played the whole round. I didn't think oh, he did gosh. fourth down in, well, in I don't Green think Bay. He actually didn't play the fourth, uh, the whole round because they closed it out. I think with three to play because they were. Well, look, he's playing against old men. Brady. He's yeah. playing against old men. That's what I think they put Mickelson and banged up Tom Brady against Bryson DeChambeau. You know, they put Aaron Rodgers. They figured Aaron Rodgers after. After the Jeopardy collapse and after the <laughs> NFC Championship game, he had, they had to give him the kid. That's not even fair. Are you are you proud of that? I'm very proud of uh, Rogers' performance. Although I will say, Tom Brady is infuriating because this guy—he's not is, human. You know, He's not being human. the greatest human, uh, the greatest uh, player of all time wasn't enough. He drove the green on a par four. Yeah. we're the, not even talking ball. about him. Uh, we're, he's not a lot. He's not in the category of the man who must not be named who moved the Browns out of Cleveland. Uh, but he's, he's pretty up there. He's up there with Terry Bradshaw and Big Ben 
in the in the pantheon of people that Cleveland folks don't like. I got to ask you, uh, by the way, the Bucks are now down 2-0. Now, if you're a real basketball fan, you know what they should do in the next game. They should tank. Win. No, they should tank. They should go to down 3-0. Because the greatest comeback in sports history are the Cavaliers down 0-3 in 2016 against the greatest team ever, the Golden State Warriors. And I'm sitting there, and the announcer says, my son is sitting next to me, and the announcer says, no team has ever come back from a 0-3 deficit in the NBA Finals. And my son says, time to make a little history, got up and left. And that's what the Cavaliers did. So I am assuming you want them to try and match the Cavaliers' achievement. No, I'd rather they just win game three and then win game four, five, and six uh, rather than, than tanking. I care not about matching the Cavaliers. I would, however, on this, the occasion of your anniversary to the Fessing Mrs. Hewitt, like to invite you and your entire family to celebrate Christmas here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And on December 25th, we can go to Lambeau Field and we can watch the Browns play the Packers on Christmas Day. As God intended us to celebrate this, too. So now, that is very tempting, Green Bay. Congressman. You can stay in my basement. It's not really furnished or, or upholstered in any way, but I think it would be a fitting Christmas. People don't know that, that Lambeau is in the banana belt of Wisconsin, and it doesn't really get cold there. So I'm tempted to go there to get relief from the California winter. It's usually rainy in December there. And uh, or in Virginia, it's a little bit cold, but, and it's a it's a banana belt in Lambeau. It's not like going to Muni in December, but I I don't know. I've got my season tickets, and and I think I will be at the Baltimore game the week before. I can't I can't recall it offhand, but we should be about fourteen and one at that point. I think there are two games left in the season. I think we're we might lose to Kansas City in the opener. It won't matter because they got to install the new Joe uh, Davis uh, uh, defense and. Uh, I I don't know if we're gonna have fourteen and one at that point. I'm not. Is 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 Rogers even coming back, or is he playing Broncos football? I think he's coming back. I, he's being very cagey. This has induced a lot of stress into my life um, that I didn't need. But I think ultimately he comes back to the Green Bay Packers and we win a Super Bowl this year. Uh, I I think Joe Woods, but it's not it's not it's, it's Joe Woods is the defensive coordinator. He will. You're not going to win a Super Bowl against the Joe Woods defense. I don't know if you see. We are the most. Yesterday, an NFL analyst put out the most talent, the teams with the most talent. Number one, Cleveland Browns. Number two, Tampa Bay Bucks. Number three, no, number two with the Chiefs. Number three, Bucks. Uh, former GM guy in in for the Giants and the Eagles. Good, good, smart guy. Ross is his name, and he did the podcast with Douglas Marais uh, out of Cleveland. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you. This is a stacked team, Congress. It's my anniversary, so I can talk sports if I want. Well, you... well, I don't know if you saw it. They piped Baker Mayfield into the match for some commentary for about. I did minutes. not. I don't watch the match. They need Baker to play because, honest to goodness, eventually, eventually, whatever it is that they're giving Tom Brady, I don't say it's an illegal substance. I think it's it's a legal substance of some sort. He's just not human. Eventually, he's going to stop. Right, he's going to be like the the Terminator, finally getting. He's just going to lie down and stop, and then they should have Baker take that up because he is the most charismatic guy in the league, right? Well, they, it didn't inspire confidence. Baker was wearing a ridiculous hat and a ridiculous shirt, and looked like he was partying in, in South Beach. So rather than using the the off season to really improve his game, I think he. I think the fame has gone to his head a little. No, bit. No, Mrs. Baker that. keeps him grounded. Mrs. Baker takes care of the fans. Mrs. Baker gets him to the church on time and shows up. Baker does not party anyway. He's a married man. Hey, I got a serious subject to ask you about because I got to ask you about this. Uh, over at the Global Times, which I know you read every day, which would you explain what the Global Times is to our, our listening audience? Uh, it is uh, media that focuses on China. And it's put out by the CCP for the CCP. If you it's don't propaganda. want information, but you want propaganda, you go to the Global Times. Yeah. Headline, picture of Dr. K, U.S. acknowledging Taiwan viewed as part of China negotiations, a precondition. He did not actually say that. Uh, they, they quote him. He did not say that. That is classic CCP propaganda, Mike Gallagher. And they, I had your predecessor in the David Dreyer chair, Secretary Pompeo, on yesterday he is no longer shocked or surprised by the fact that the 
Chinese people's uh, Chinese Communist Party is harvesting genomic data from their pregnancy testing kits around the world. But are you? No, I mean, they're being so aggressive in their investments in a variety of areas, uh, biotechnology in particular, which really could ignite a economic revolution that has an impact greater than the industrial revolution. If you just look at the the potential implications of various biotechnologies. As for the Global Times, uh, you know, it, it's amazing to me if you just sort of look at American social media in general, Twitter in particular, the amount of, of, of people that don't understand when they're retweeting a Global Times story or reading a Global Times story or looking at a Chinese official who is retweeting a Global Times story, that they're retweeting or parroting Chinese state party propaganda, because uh, that is uh, what it is. And uh, the way in which they've twisted Dr. Kissinger's words in this story is just the latest example in a increasingly aggressive propaganda campaign that remarkably has intensified throughout uh, the pandemic with the so-called wolf warrior diplomacy. They've really unleashed all of their diplomatic officials to exploit American social media platforms in order to spread pro-Chinese Communist Party narratives and anti American narratives, and your average consumer just isn't aware of the extent to which they're being played by the Chinese Communist Party. It's part of the reason why I think, as we have this thorny debate over how we regulate our own social media companies here in the U.S., one simple standard that I think we could agree upon is that, um, you know, American social media companies shouldn't host foreign officials who deny access to their own citizens. 100% to that platform, right? Now, let me, let me talk to you about the genomic thing, which Secretary Pompeo pointed out yesterday. As they, as 8 million women around the world take a pregnancy test by BGI, their data is being kept by BGI and now given to the Chinese military and the Communist Chinese par uh, Party. They use that genomic data to artificial intelligence analyze. So their AI then takes that data to predict uh, human behavior and human uh, physiology it's sort of like to go back to our football chatter analytics in football increasingly you, you you smash the data you know what to do on fourth down you smash the data you know when to run when you know you know everything by just doing the data and being smart the ccp's ai advantage is alarming congressman is congress doing anything about that well the, the problem we have in this space is that in a, in a society where there's no, they make no distinction between the private and public sector, they have civil military fusion, their AI companies, since time foremost among them, are able to suck up you know, billions uh, of data from, from billions of, of people. Whereas we, of course, have a free and open society uh, where at times there's uh, understandable skepticism uh, between the public and private sector. That's our fundamental challenge. However, our our AI companies right now are better than the Chinese state champions. And so therefore, we need to do everything possible to bridge the growing cultural divide between our major tech companies and the federal government, Amazon and Microsoft in particular. Now, I do think Microsoft has done its best to try and be a productive partner with the Defense Department. But these companies, uh, Amazon in particular, are facing enormous social pressure from their own woke employees and the woke media to refuse to do business with the defense establishment, with the national security community. And that's how we lose, Hugh. Uh, if, we, if our companies come to see themselves not as American companies first and foremost with the duty to work with the American company within the context of the rule of law and you know, the, the rights that private companies enjoy, and instead view themselves as multinational companies or citizens of the world, that is how we lose. Ultimately, Hugh, my belief, uh, having spent a couple of years working on this from a cyber perspective, is that you know all these, these fancy technologies really obscure the fact that this is still fundamentally a human problem. It all comes down to whether we can recruit, train, and harness the talent of human beings in this space. And if we have more talented human beings that are willing to uh, work on behalf of their country and serve their company, their country in the process, we will win this competition with China. It is, however, going to involve some investment from the federal government in critical technology areas, because what we learned in the pandemic is that we are too dangerously dependent on hostile foreign powers for the manufacturing and production of basic technologies like semiconductors, 
pharmaceuticals, rare earths, energetics, things that make weapons move, and, of course, emerging technologies in the realm of AI, quantum computing, and the like. I, I, I salute you for that. I want people to read the report that you did with Senator Angus King, independent was it caucuses with the Democrats. Great example of bipartisan cooperation where it matters most in the national defense. Congressman Gallagher, have a great weekend. Maybe, maybe New Christmas Eve. No, I don't think so. I'm not going up to the banana belt uh, of Lambeau Field, even with my relief factor infused body.